Hello poetry lovers and poetry curious. Today I'm going to read to you The End of the World by Archibald MacLeish from The Voice That Is Great Within Us, an American, whoops, American Poetry of the 20th Century. So it's an anthology, which I've been reading to you from, and I've got lots more that I'll be reading to you from this book. So our randomized poetry element for this poem is repetition. So is this 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14? All right, it's, it's a sonnet with a sonnet rhyme scheme. Yep, a Shakespearean sonnet rhyme scheme. Don't, don't let that create any assumptions in you. <laughs> don't, don't make any assumptions about it based on the fact that it's a sonnet. So here we go, the end of the world. Quite unexpectedly as Vassaro, the armless ambidextrian was lighting a match between his great and second toe, the, and Ralph the lion was engaged in biting the neck of Madame Saussman while the drum pointed and Tini was about to cough in waltz time, swinging Jocko by the thumb. Quite unexpectedly, the top blew off. And there, there, overhead, there, there, hung over those thousands of white faces, those dazed eyes. There, in the starless dark, the poise, the hover. There, with vast wings across the canceled skies. There, in the sudden blackness, the black pall of nothing, 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 nothing at all. So we do have repetition here, but it's all in the second half. In what is, in sonnet terms, is called the sestet, this, the last six lines of the poem. And we start with there, 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 there. <laughs> Uh, so how many times is there there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's. Let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. What I was counting there was in the first half, do we have like six people or six actions going, or seven, to go with all of the theirs. Um, if the number of theirs was equivalent to the number of people and animals that we are and things that we are introduced to in the first part. But I think there are six things. Vassero, um, the lion, Madame Sossman, a drum, Teeny, and Jocko. Yep, six. So he's not attempting to just match those. Um, so to me, when I see that there, there overhead, it's like all of the people pointing up overhead. Forget what was just down here. For one thing, there was an explosion. <laughs> so... Everyone is pointing upward. Um, and in the darkness, there is something um, that is hovering with vast, that with vast wings that cancels the sky. And it isn't until we've had all of the theirs that we hit on additional repetition. So we have the seven theirs, and then we hit blackness and the black pall, which is in one line. So we have black and black, and then we have one, two, three, four nothings. The black pall of nothing, 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 nothing at all. So there's a great voiding So I would say that the repetition is used here 
for emphasis and also direction because the there, like I said, is like pointing us. It's taking us from the spectacle of the things in the first part of the poem to the sky after the explosion and the emptiness that's there. It's interesting that he thinks that he has to do the there, there, there so much to redirect us. But I don't think there's too much else to say about the repetition other than it's used to indicate a complete shift of the focus from a spectacle of variety to a spectacle of blankness and and repetition you know so there's there's no more variety in the second half not even variety of language particularly um, all right so in case it wasn't clear from the reading of it, we're starting in a circus-like environment. So we have an armless ambidextrian, but his ambidextriousness is apparently in his feet. Um, and he's lighting a match between his big toe and his second toe. Then we have a lion that is biting the neck of a woman. I don't know how a drum points, but there's a drum pointing, and then somebody called Teeny, uh, who is coughing in waltz time while swinging somebody by the thumb. So, again, a spectacle, right? Or a series of spectacles, a bunch of seats. So the three ring circus is here, or the six ring circus is here, something like that. Um, is this poem more thinking or actions or observations? Actually, there's a lot of actions in here. It's very action-oriented in the beginning, but there is there is some quote that's actions that lead to nothing. So that's what this poem seems to be, actions that in the second part um, combust <laughs> into nothing. Um, is this poem more representative or abstract? I would say that it is representative. I'm going to say unpleasantly representative. Um, Not wholly, but that's how I would interpret it. Unpleasantly representative. He doesn't do much um, expressing at all about what we're supposed to make of this. He's leaving that up to us. Is this poem obvious, subtle, or does it leave you scratching your head? I would say there's as aspects of all three of those here. I'm not 100% sure if at the end where you have these vast rings across the canceled sky, if he's if he's trying to invoke a devil, is, is that what he's doing? Um, and the devil is here depicted as as a void or the emptiness of people's actions, as opposed to somebody that you meet in hell. I, I'm not 100% sure. That's a head-scratcher for me. Um, but I think, you know, parts of it are more obvious, such as the idea that, you know, the, the, the circus of human life um, may even generate its own end. That's getting a little more subtle, but that the circus of human life um, ends in nothing. That would be the simplest way to put it.
And, but I do think that there are more subtle ways to think of this, to explore it. Does this poem progress in a linear way or a discursive way? It's, it's pretty linear. Uh, there's, again, there's the circus actions, but he is taking them one at a time and they go from one to the next. And then the top blows off. And there's a break in the stanzas. There's, this is two stanzas and the top blowing off is the end of the first stanza. So that gives us an additional clue that things are about to shift entirely. And then we don't go too many places after it blows off. We're just pointing at the darkness. Um, so I'm going to say linear and pleasantly linear because there, there's no room to get lost here. Um, what fiction category is this poem most similar to? Should I call it dystopian or magical realism or horror? <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, you know, over time I've read a lot and it's partly in there like I can see the cover of something. <laughs> But I can't remember who it's who it's by and what the title is. It's strike. I think it's Douglas Adams. It strikes me as something that might happen in Douglas Adams books. But I can't. Is it like the universe and everything? I can't remember. Anyway, that's my best shot at fiction. Um, which nonfiction category is this poem most similar to? I guess I'll say social criticism. Is it attempting to be religion? Maybe. Or philosophy? But I'm going to go with social criticism. What musical category is this poem most similar to? You know what I'm leaning toward? I'm leaning toward punk. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but I'm leaning toward punk. So that's what I'm just going to go with. What sort of visual art style is this poem most similar to? I would call it surreal. Maybe Impressionism. But there's such a bizarre um, set of things going on in the first paragraph. Or who was it? Was it Toulouse-Lautrec? Who had... Um, well, he had the dance hall girls. Did he also have circus images? I can't remember. Um, in a word or a phrase, what would you say is primarily being communicated? That life is a circus in which we think we are interesting And, uh, and it amounts to nothing. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's the way I'm going to put it. That's what is primarily being communicated. That it all, all of the kinetic posturing amounts to nothing. All right, I feel like I've just had these, that all of this week has been kind of downer poems. Yeah. Well, I don't know, maybe not the very beginning of the week. Although we did have a death. 
and we had winter overtaking things so yeah didn't plan it that way <laughs> it does seem like a bit of a downer I think my two poems that I'll be comparing um, on Saturday are more amusing and uh, maybe we'll need it <laughs> it's like I feel like I need to apologize anyway um, that's it for the end of the world by Archibald MacLeish.